Today, we look at the top 10 most valuable and historically important DC Comics of the year 1962. Ranking number 10 is Showcase 36, featuring the third Silver Age appearance of the Atom, as featured here on the cover on this 12-cent cover price comic with art by Gil Kane and Murphy Anderson. There is a 9.6 graded Western Pen pedigree copy of this book. It ranks number 10 of 1962 and the 98th most valuable DC comic of the entire 1960s. On the CGC census, you can see not a lot of copies graded yet, still only 247 on the census and all grades combined. There are 26 copies grading 9.0 or higher. And Heritage Auctions has sold 94 copies in the last two decades. Using the Overstreet Annual Price Guide, we can compare the price growth year by year. Yet, interestingly enough, you'll see there's a complete freeze on this title in every grade for the last eight years in a row. So no movement at all. Why is this? Well, this book just seems to be overgraded, uh, overpriced at this time. And uh, market correction is just holding it uh, frozen for the time being. This isn't going to stay this way forever, uh, but it's a pretty expensive book. And I think the reason is it's only a third appearance. And so it's quite an expensive book for a third appearance. $40 still in lowest grades, but $1,050 for a 9.2 raw copy is the current grade price in Overstreet. On the census, there are three 9.6s and seven 9.4s as the highest graded copies. Number nine of the year is Green Lantern number 16. This issue features Star Sapphire in her first appearance and origin issue. And this also features Gil Kane artwork. This was on the newsstands at the same time as Fantastic Four number six over at Marvel Comics. This ranks number nine of the year and 89th of the decade for DC. Print run estimated at 240,000 copies of this book. And here she features on the cover here. On the CGC census, there are now 415 copies graded. Lots of demand growing for this book. 33, 9.6s or higher. So oh, that would be 9.0s or higher. And Heritage has sold 69 copies in the last two decades. On the census, there definitely has been growth. The book had a big jump uh, about a decade ago. Still an affordable book, though, even in low grades. But definitely, you can see in the last decade, the book has almost tripled in low grades. And the book has almost quadrupled in high grades for raw copies. Definitely sneaking up there. On the census, we have five 9.6s and seven 9.4s. Number eight of the year is Justice League of America, number 10. And there are two villains who make their first appearances in this issue. We have Felix Faust and the Lord of Time, known as Epoch. We have Murphy Anderson cover art and Mike Sikowski interior art. Print run estimated at 340,000 copies. This title was a big hit for DC. Ranks eighth of the year and 75th of the decade. On the CGC census, there are 262 copies graded, 26 9.0s or higher. And Heritage has sold 71 of this yellow background cover. We've got everyone on the cover, including Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. In the Overstreet Price Guide, another book that has stalled in recent years, uh, but it's uh, overall sneaking up there year by year. Now stalled at $45 in low grades and $1,175 for high grade raw copy. On the census, there are two 9.6s and four 9.4s. The number seven comic of the year is Justice League America, number eight. This has features a Mike Sikowski cover and interior art. Again, we've got the whole gang here featured in this issue. Print run 335,000 copies. Number seven of the year, 74th of the decade. CGC now has 279 copies graded. 26 and 9.0s or higher. Heritage has sold 77. Same price uh, breakdown in Overstreet. Again, stalled in all grades in the last couple of years. Otherwise, just a slow and steady mover. On the census, there is one 9.8 of this book and two 9.6s at the high end. And we're making our way up the list now to number six, which is Justice League of America, 
number nine. It's the origin issue of the Justice League, told for the first time in this issue, in a story set before their first appearance in Brave and the Bold 28. We've got art from Mike Sikowski and Murphy Anderson in this one. This was on the newsstands at the same time as Fantastic Four, number three. And this issue tells us how the team came together. On the census, there's now 533 copies graded, 73 9.0s or higher, and 110 sold by Heritage. Classic cover with the tree fingers. Overstreet, again, this book has also stalled a couple of times in the last decade, but slowly moving up overall. And it's now a $1,475 book in high grade raw. There are two 9.8s in this book, five 9.6s, and a whopping 22 9.4s existing of this key issue. Number five of the year is Adventure Comics number 300, special anniversary issue, but it also begins the Tales of the Legion of Superheroes uh, stories that would begin in this issue. Mon L leaves the Phantom Zone in this issue and joins the Legion. We have Kurt Swan, classic cover art. George Papp and Al Plastino interior art. This is the number one Superman and Superboy related comic of the year. Ranks fourth of the year and 42nd of the decade. And CDC Census is climbing now 248 copies, 16 9.0s or higher. And Heritage has sold 52 copies of this book in the last two decades. And we've got the whole team of all the major characters in this book, led by Superboy. In the Overstreet Price Guide, this book has also stalled a few times overall, but had a little bump up this past year. And now it's an $1,800 book in high grade. On the census, there are two 9.4s and six 9.2s of this book. Ranking number four of the year is GI Combat 91. This is the first cover appearance of the Haunted Tank in a special gray tone cover on this 12 cent book. And Russ Heath drew the cover art here. And this story features the ghost of General Stewart. It ranks fourth of the year and 40th of the decade. This is the number one most valuable war comic of the year and 19th most valuable DC war comic ever. Print run estimated 240,000 copies. On the census, again, always proving that war comics are really hard to come by. There's only 71 copies graded in this book and only two ranking 9.0 or higher. And Heritage has only sold 18 copies in 20 years. On the census, this book installed last year, but starting to make slow moves up again. And it's now a $1,900 book. But you can see the growth this book has had in the last 15 years where it's gone up. Uh, it's quadrupled in low grades and more impressive has gone up almost eight times in high grades. On the census, there are only two 9.0s and one 8.5. The number three comic of the year, we're getting into the, the big books now, Showcase 37 features the first appearance of the Metal Men, cover art and interior from Ross Andrew and Mike Esposito. There is a 9.2 CGC Don and Maggie Thompson pedigree copy. This ranks um, third of the year and 23rd of the entire decade. Print run estimated at 220,000 copies. Census is really growing on this one. Now we have 414 copies graded and 16 9.0s or higher. Heritage has sold 105 copies of this book. Blue background cover. Overstreet, definitely movement on this book. This book has been moving consistently for a decade now. It had stalled uh, over a decade ago. And so now we find this is a $3,100 book. One 9.4 exists and five 9.2s. Number two of the year. Now that we have a major book. The Adam Gets His Own Series, number one. And this book also features the first appearance of the plant master, Jason Woodrue, and of Maya. We have Gil Kane cover and interior art, number two of the year and 22 of the decade. 528 copies graded in total, 23 ranking 9.0 or higher. And Heritage has sold a whopping 199 copies of this classic cover. Lots of movement for this book in Overstreet. It has not stalled uh, in the last six years. Keeps moving up and it's now a $3,100 book. On the census, 
we have a 9.6 and seven 9.4s. And that brings us to the number one most important and valuable DC comic of 1962. It is Aquaman, number one, getting his own first issue, solo series. And this also features the first appearance of Quisp, the Water Sprite. Cover art by Howard Purcell and interior art by Nick Cardi, number one of the year and eighth of the entire decade for value. On the census, a whopping 847 copies have been graded, 46 9.0s or higher, and Heritage has sold 165 of this book. And on the cover, we have Aquaman and Aqualad, also the Fire Trolls. In Overstreet Price Guide, this book has been always strong, no slowing down at all for this one. It's now over $200 for a low-grade copy, and now it's $6,000 for 9.2, and it's got big increases year by year on this key book. On the census, there are four 9.6s and seven 9.4s. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to compare these 10 books on the CGC census just to see which ones stand out for different reasons. The first thing we notice, of course, is Aquaman number one by far has the most copies graded due to being higher demand because it's a, a quick jumping book and it's the most valuable book of the year. After that, we actually have Justice League of America number nine. Lots of hype for this book from uh, speculators, 533 copies. And then Adam number one has 528. On the low end, GI Combat 91, the war title, has only 71 copies graded. After that, the rarest book on the census is actually Showcase 36. And that might be just because it is the lowest value of the 10 books on our list. On the high end of the census, we did find that Justice League number nine had a 9.8, in fact, two copies, and Justice League eight had one 9.8. After that, we have pretty well 9.6s for all the other books, except for GI Combat 91, which proves to be almost impossible to find in a real high grade copy, 9.0 being the highest. There you go, the top 10 most valuable DC comics of 1962. This series continues every week, so please subscribe to this channel, and thanks for watching.